It's one of Canada's oldest historic uh, businesses. It's uh, 193 years old. It's a really neat establishment. I'd hate to see it go under because I think there's not a lot of places like this around anymore and I think it's pretty historically significant. Well, the history of the mill, it goes back a long way to 1819, as I mentioned before. That, that's 193 years ago, and it was originally um, granted to uh, uh, one of the original settlers, uh, a fellow by the name of Flood, and uh, he received about 100 acres from, from the king at the time. This mill thrived. People came from all over southern Ontario to bring their, their uh, grain here for milling and uh, a lot of uh, the wool and from sheep was, was brought here for that mill. It was a big mill. And then when those mills closed around 1900 or shortly before that, I think they, uh, they used some of the lumber from those mills to build more barns on, on this mill. I'd become a friend of the mill. <laughs> the fellow that owned it who passed away a few years ago was a very good friend and i have grown up uh, with this family for many, many years, and uh, the decision was made by the siblings to uh, carry on and, and put the mill back on the map because it's one of Canada's oldest historic uh, businesses. I've been working here pretty much my whole life, uh, full time since uh, about 1996, but I've actually been running it since uh, 1999. There's a lot of companies that go to the wayside when the uh, kids take it over from their parents, so I'd like to see that, that change here. What makes this flour mill different than any other flour mill is that it's the oldest continually running mill in the country. Um, there's other mills that might be older, but none that have been running since, since they opened. Uh, it's almost 200 years now. And the product we produce is a little special. I mean, I've known about the flour mill all my life. Um, always been wanting to get out here, but never had a, had a chance to, to come. Um, so this is my actually my second time here, and I'm hooked. <laughs> um, I've used the other flowers, but since I've been using this, I just love it. It, it makes great bread. These are, the, these are the mills that were installed at the turn of the century. And as you can see, they're wood. They run off uh, these large leather belts. Some of these belts are, are 20 meters long and uh, they go right down into the bowels of the mill. These were the state of the art at the time when they were installed. There's two sets of rollers. This is the front set. There's a large roller and, and another rib roller and the grain passes through those where it begins the grinding process from the first uh, mill up at that far end and it comes down here. So all the grain goes through about 12 different sifting processes. These are the sifters before it gets going, gets put back into the mills again. This is the, uh, an elevator that, that I mentioned that takes the grain up to the third floor. And it's really just a belt, a large belt that'll go up this and it'll be coming down the other side. And with these little leather cups, it'll pick up the grain down in the bin below and take it up and dump it on the third floor. Well, in comparison to uh, the newer mills, the bigger mills, we are definitely a joke. They don't, we are not a threat to them by any means. We mill uh, around 1,200 pounds of flour an hour here. Any of the big mills there, what they mill in a day would take us close to about 300 days milling 24 hours a day to what they mill in a day. We would like to turn the, the mill into a, a district center, uh, a destination center for people to come and visit. Uh, we will be putting more um, stores in here. We'd like to uh, restore the mill house, which is up at, at the top of the hill. Uh, we'd like to restore that and turn that into a, a small uh, restaurant, restaurant pub, uh, gastro pub kind of thing that's very popular now, uh, possibly at a bakery. Uh, all to do local uh, 
uh, artisan baking so that you know where your product is coming from. Uh, we also in our store have a large gluten-free section. There are so many people now that uh, seem to be uh, sensitive to gluten. Um, celiacs in particular are very sensitive and, and up until recently we had one of the largest selections of gluten-free flours uh, in this area. So a lot of people uh, are familiar with that and come out. We hope to capitalize again on that and, and with the bakery maybe get into more gluten-free baking. I think there's a really good chance it'll survive into the future. Uh, we're making changes here so that it's a little bit easier. Because right now it's very difficult to run a 193 year old mill uh, in today's economy. But as we develop the property more and uh, get in more local people, uh, we're going to have local cheese shops, local meat shops, all on this property. So it's a one-stop shop for people eating all local and local produced product. It's a long-term thing. We have a long-term goal here. And uh, we have a lot of people that are just fascinated with us, with it, and come down and they help us. People are bringing us um, historic items all the time to see if, if we could use them. Well, I'm hoping, I guess my future hopes and aspirations involved with the mill would be uh, to learn to run the equipment and replace the current miller. Well, I think with, with the help of, of people coming here, increasing the, our sales, we can make this work and we can generate enough um, activity here to restore the mill. It, it takes capital and uh, with the increased stores and so on, we can make it work.